Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I printed, finished, and painted this incredibly detailed and expressive Daredevil model from Wicked 3D. So one of my favorite artists that I am a patron of on Patreon is Wicked 3D. His information is below. They are, I'm assuming it's multiple people because the amount of work they kick out is mind boggling. Uh, so if you're interested in really amazing figures, go below in the description and check that out. You'll also see other affiliate links uh, on the different resins and paints I use. Go ahead and click on those. They're all in there, what I use to do this model. So it's a great Patreon. It's something like 10 bucks, I believe. Tons of figures and they're just all super, super high quality. This is Daredevil. Uh, he's always been one of my favorite characters and I just love the pose on this. It's very dynamic. I love the base. I thought it looked really cool. So I went ahead and printed this guy up. Now I printed this on my Piopoli Prime and used Sierra Tech resin for that. And it came out really, really well. And I tried some different painting techniques with this and I'm really looking forward to share uh, with you. So without further ado, let's go behind the fake wall and I'll show you how I created this Daredevil statue. So the initial print, the hand and baton didn't print out well. So instead of printing everything over again, I just printed out the hand. I s figured, why not give it a try? I do this often. If prints fail, you can just fix them. You don't have to print everything over again. So I cut off his hand. I got out some of my super glue and I glued the hand on. And you, when we're done, will never tell the difference. You don't have to go through and just you know, use uh, more and more filament or more and more resin to print something out if you can just fix a part of it. And yeah, there's a line there, but we're gonna use my old favorite, the epoxy sculpt, two-part epoxy, mix this stuff up. You can use water to smooth it out. I use some pottery tools sometimes to get in there and maybe add some texture or to just help smooth the areas. And by the time you paint it, you're done with it. It does not look like there was any damage at all. So now I've gone through and sanded it. I did have some sanding footage, but uh, you know, all I'm doing is sanding. And for something like this, I usually start with a 220 and go to 400 and just knock everything back and hit it with a two-in-one primer. Everything I use is below. And you can check out this video above to see how I sand things. Then we're going to start with some basics paint, some red, some blue, and a sharper red. Now, you don't want to mix black with red. You want to mix a blue with red. You want to mix its complementary color to sort of knock the, I don't want, not shininess, but the vibrancy of it back, the hue of it back. And when I first started with this, I said, oh, it's a little too red. And I knew it needed to go, you know, back a little farther to be a little bit more muted. So I went ahead and added a little bit more blue to this. And that was kind of the perfect tone. I'm still gonna be weathering it. So, you know, it's gonna make it a little bit more grimy looking. And this looks very red in the video. It's not that red, you'll see in the end. And of course, this is its first coat. So you can see the primer underneath it. This will need to get two coats completely uh, and let that dry before I'm gonna go on. Now, sometimes I use a hair dryer to dry things, but I had a base to work on. So I just went ahead and let it sit to dry it. You could see now, you could still see some of the gray underneath it. So we're gonna work on this. This base is so awesome. It is, you know, it's got the church stuff going on. It's just really, really cool. So here we're gonna use some black, some titanium white, some uh, brown color, some burnt sienna, and my favorite unbleached titanium to mix up a gray that's got a little bit of character, just black and white, uh, doesn't really give it a lot. This has got a little bit of warmth to it. And now we're gonna weather this up because all these cracks and crevices that Wicked 3D puts in will really, really get accentuated when we make this wash. And all it is is that the basics paint. Again, everything I use will be in the description below. Those are affiliate links. And I'm gonna mix this stuff up and I think I need a little bit more black paint. It needs to be a little bit thicker. And I'm just gonna wash this model with this black paint. And you can see from uh, the previous part of the video, I did end up making it darker because it was just too, too light of a wash. 
And what this is doing is with this old brush is I'm just pushing the black, pushing this, you know, this wash into the cracks and crevices, and then I'm blotting it with a paper towel. You know, a wad of paper towel helps give it texture, helps make it look, you know, um, not so uniform. You don't want to sort of wipe it off with a brush. You want to pat this. Now, I think I might be overdoing it a little bit and taking too much away. Here's the good thing. You can add more and pat that away. But you know, it's starting to shape up and starting to look like a dirty, grimy rooftop. And we're going to fix up some things later on as we go through the process, but I'm really liking this. And we're going to go through the whole thing and do that. And once that's done, we're going to start on the Daredevil lettering. As you can see, we're going to have to give this several coats because of the primer and the fact that I'm really sloppy when I'm painting and I've got that gray all over the Daredevil <laughs> word, but that's okay. A couple coats and you'll never tell the difference. So here I'm using a, uh, this is just a makeup brush with a little bit of that titanium white to just... Now I'm hitting the high spots. I'm hitting high traffic areas. I'm giving this depth. We've got our, our whiter tone here, the gray, and then the blacks that are in the cracks and crevices. And this is showing like where, where, where maybe people are stepping. And you can really see it here, how it gives the model so much more depth. And that's what you want to build up. Just like if you're painting or you're doing, you know, watercolors or something like that, you're building depth in something. Just because this thing is 3D, the thing that really makes it pop and really makes it come alive as a 3D statue, as you can see here, is layering your colors, layering your grays, whichever thing you're doing. And now we're going to go back and in these deep cracks and crevices that maybe just got a little bit too much white in them or a little too much fill, I'm going to go ahead with a darker black and really just paint through those to really make them look like they're you know, cracks and they're deeper. Again, we're creating depth, we're creating layers, and that's helping tell the story of this rooftop. Now, this is something I really like to do here, and that's using a really light watery wash on this rough brush and just doing these um, sort of dippling or stippling type things where you're just sort of raking your thumb across it and giving it this sort of modeled look again. It's just another little technique to make things look wear, uh, like they're worn and give them a little bit of texture. And I really like doing that. At some point though, you got to stop. And it was at this point I realized, all right, I'm just, I'm going crazy with this thing. I've got to stop. <laughs> Now it's time to glue Daredevil together, just using some super glue, of course, and putting the pieces together and hitting it with a little bit of, of the accelerant. But you can see, of course, there's a line. Things line up really well. He does a great job uh, doing his models, but that's right. We're going to use some of our epoxy sculpt to get into this crack with some tools, some water, and our fingers to really smooth it out. And the nice thing is, it's in an area that's sort of got folds and whatnot because of the, the cloth and because of the suit itself. You always want to try to add that back in. But since it's this, you know, area that's already got these folds, it's going to be pretty easy to make this thing look, you know, like it was never even there. And you can see just pushing it into those cracks and crevices really, really make it look like it's part of it. And I think it's important. I think it helps really sell the statue as it looks like it was done professionally and uh, there's no lines there. Now, I should have kept some of that red because this red does not match. So I did have to fool around a little bit to get the right color red to make this work, but in the end I did. So here I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna use these pastels and a makeup brush and I'm not gonna use any paint here. I'm gonna use this powder, this, these pastels, to create these sort of really soft, almost um, airbrush looking uh, shadows. Now, some of you might be saying, why aren't you using an airbrush? Well, two reasons. One, uh, my wife doesn't like me to use any type of paints inside. Uh, <laughs> and two, uh, I suck with an airbrush uh, at this point. I still have not gotten good enough with an airbrush, probably because I don't use it enough, to really have been able to aim in these little areas to make it look like this. And this stuff, I love how it makes it look. It's like these smooth shadows, again, something that you would do with an airbrush. I still need to tweak them a little bit and soften them up here and there, but he is on his way to looking sort of shadowed and weathered, and I really dig it. 
So now it's FaceTime. So we're going to use this basic skin tone from Vallejo. This comes from a Vallejo you know, skin pack that I got. Links below. And we're just going to do this uh, light wash, couple coats, and we're going to fill this in. One, we want to use a really sort of watered down mix here so that we don't have brush marks and it doesn't get cakey. And we're just going to cover this over and we're going to end up giving it a couple different coats. Don't worry at this point, it's not looking too great, but it will get better. So I thought while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to use this awesome brush I found. And these, these things are a lifesaver for people who need to get in close to things. And I'm going to just do the eyes. And here is just a straight red, straight uh, Vallejo red, uh, because I wanted them to look like sort of lenses, and I really like how they turned out. And that brush, it's the brush I've been looking for my whole life. Now, again, I wanted to look like lenses, so I went ahead and used a spot varnish so that they would keep that sort of wet, glossy look like lenses would. And since his whole outfit is this red color, I thought I'd try to differentiate some shapes with that gloss. And I think the best shape to do that would, would be the DD logo. So now everything else will be sort of like a matte, but the Daredevil logo and his uh, lenses, those will be shiny. So now to add this clear red to his face, this is creating, again, this is really super thin, watered down, and we're working in the cracks and the areas on like the human face where you have this sort of red tone. And we're going to be putting it in some of the cracks. Uh, of course, we're going to use it in the lip area. And after a while, you can start to see, because we're doing this over time, we're not just one thick coat, we're building up these reds, building up these reds, until the face starts to look more and more natural. Then I go through and I give the lips, you know, two or three more coats, so that again they have that sort of more natural tone instead of using just like a red paint if we use this wash which is really thin it still shows the color beneath it so now we're going to use this darker skin tone this brown rose mix it in with some of the red and this is going to be for our shadows so we want to add some shadowing back in and where you're going to find that of course is like the creases of his cheeks he has here under his nose those little the, under the lip, you have that crease, the little shadow that you get. Maybe the cleft in his chin. And then we want to add some highlights. So this is back to almost like a white, the lightest skin tone we had. Hitting the nose area. Sorry, this is going to get blurry for a second. And then most importantly, the bridge of the nose, because that's the highest peak and it's going to catch a lot of light. And I just sort of add some where light hits first and is more bright on the human face. And I'm really, really liking how this face turned out. And we use pastels again, because I thought, why not give him a five o'clock shadow? Daredevil has a rough life most of the time. So I went ahead and did that. I need to tweak it up a little bit more, but I like how it's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead now and start working on the base attaching him and then doing all my tweaks once he's actually on there i just have a few other little things i need to smooth out but i want to get him on this base now and i used super glue and i used a little bit of epoxy because he's a big guy and a heavy guy now i have had some people say you don't need epoxy it'll, it'll you know hold with just the super glue and it probably will but you know it's this big tall model and it's just held there by two points, so I want to make sure it holds, and it does in the end, and I'm very happy. So let's take a look at how this thing came out. So I love how these skin tones turned out, and the red looks super sharp. Uh, I like not adding any sort of highlights by paint, because you end up just really getting uh, orangey or pink looks. So this turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. And look, there's the hand. You'd never know that was an add-on. But overall, this, the pose of the statue, the base is just phenomenal. Really, really dig this. So I really love this model. I love that pose. It's very dynamic. Uh, I also like that I had to fix the model. Uh, I do that quite often. You know, instead of reprinting something, if I can just print the hands or print something and then like glue it on, you know, that's what I'm gonna do. Save myself a lot of time and resin because resin can be expensive. Now, if you wanna print one of these out yourself, go ahead in the description below 
you'll find Wicked 3D's information. You will not be disappointed if you're into figures. Uh, also, if you want to do one of these and you want to use the materials I used, the paints and things like that, that is in the description below as well. Those are our affiliate links, and of course, they just help out the channel with a few extra bucks here and there. And yeah, this was a super fun one. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to put it up with the rest of my statues and just enjoy how it looks. Now, I do have another very, very cool, even bigger daredevil statue from wicked 3d that i just finished printing and i will be working on for an upcoming video if you want to see that please click like and subscribe and hit that little bell this way you'll know when that video comes out thanks a lot guys again i really appreciate it have a great day and i'll see you in the next video